I think um, I will repeat a few of the slides because actually this is the same group um, of patients with severe uh, resistance epilepsy. However, you didn't hear much um, about the history. I just included a few slides and a few um, articles maybe you will be interested um, in. Um, um, it is the Sumerian text 2,900 years before Christ mentioning the cannabis use uh, specifically as an uh, anticonvulsant and it is cited in this uh, very nice paper from um, Rosano. Um, and um, uh, as you know also, um, it has been mentioned also in many Arabic papers and um, in these perfect papers of um, Dr. Rousseau, um, how they found um, in old tombs, uh, 2,700 years before Christ, the cannabis products. I spent my um, holidays, well, 10 days, um, in Sicily, uh, in Marsala. In Marsala they have a very famous Marsala wine, um, which is um, a kind of Porto, the English were in Marsala, and they were out of Porto and they started to produce um, the wine from the vineyards in Marsala and it was perfect so some of the English people they prefer Marsala wine now than Porto but however they have also archaeological museum where they keep I think the oldest ship from the um, Punic Wars from the Cartagena um, it is 5th century before Christ and what is uh, even more interesting is that uh, besides the wine and oil they were using as an equipment on the ships um, and some olives is um, and the rest and some some tools they needed for for the fishing and so on they were always having in their equipment also uh, cannabis so um, already the Carthaginians um, they thought that maybe cannabis can be a very good medicine for uh, different um, diseases and for different um, problems that they had however in Europe um, there was um, only um, um, at the end of the 19th century that it has been introduced as a medicine um, by Irish doctor O'Shaughnessy who studied it in um, India for a long time and um, soon after that um, it became very popular not only in England but all over the Europe and um, it has been included in many of the pharmacopoeias, um, as, as well as the United um, uh, Kingdom as um, the United States. Um, and this is the paper of um, Dr. O'Shaughnessy describing also the anticonvulsant um, effect of the cannabis. It has been used also by, it was already mentioned today, by Sir John Russell Reynolds, who was a very famous um, a doctor of the Queen Victoria, um, and he, he used it for her menstrual cramps, um, which were unbearable. So it is written. Um, however, um, it was not a long time um, when um, it became the fashion to smoke uh, cannabis. Um, it, it was called hashish, um, and it was brought actually by the French. French are always making a problem. Um, and um, it was brought by Napoleon from the um, Cairo and from other um, countries. Um, and it became a fashion. And um, um, very soon afterwards, you know that um, then there was this marijuana tax act and so on. So it became um, prohibited uh, due to this abuse. And um, it was um, put in the Schedule One classification um, by U.S. Drug Enforcement Administration, and this is actually also the problem why um, uh, cannabis, which was used for 4,500 or even 5,000 years, um, still we don't know the information about dosing, drug interaction, efficacy, safety. Um, because of this uh, simple prohibition act uh, due to this fact of um, hashish abuse. And uh, it was only in September last year that uh, DAA um, was classifying cannabidiol only, not the cannabis, 
um, in the schedule five medications. So um, again, this um, marijuana fields, field research can be boosted again. And to go back to Sir Reynolds, um, he stated um, in The Lancet, which was also um, uh, at that time a very famous journal, um, he stated that um, India hemp is the most um, efficacious uh, treatment for the uh, people, uh, for the adult patients um, who, have, who have epilepsy. And um, uh, 150 years in the same journal, um, a very famous epileptologist um, has published uh, this sentence that even um, um, after having a lot of different anti-epileptic drugs um, for the past 20 years, which is really a boom of these anti-epileptic drugs, about a third of the patients, what we already heard many times today, um, uh, will be completely resistant to medical treatment. And this is um, a very well-known um, paper from Kwan and Brody, uh, who showed the response to the first anti-epileptic drug, to the second anti-epileptic drug, and third, and so on. So the response is falling um, immediately after we start um, using second drug. So if the two drugs are inefficient, um, we call it um, refractory um, epilepsy. And um, it is not only um, the seizures are refractory, but um, actually it is changing completely the life of these children and the life of the whole family, because what we call it when these uh, seizures are um, repetitive, we call it um, encephalopathy, that means that the complete brain is completely changed. Um, and there is um, a severe decline of cognitive and motor abilities and so on and so on, um, together with many side effects of the treatment. Mm -hmm. It is not only that we know today um, that a lot of these, uh, especially the early, um, the early um, epilepsies, are um, having spe specific genetic um, uh, background where there is also a motor and cognitive decline um, associated with these uh, genetic types of epilepsy. But it is also, uh, we should admit, our use of anti-epileptic drugs, spe specifically if we combine different anti-epileptic drugs, that they will pose more and more problems and they will decline the quality of life. And some of them, um, we, we have heard many times today that cannabis and the cannabidiol, usually they will not have severe, severe side effects and they will be not life-threatening. However, some of the anti-epileptic drugs can be quite um, life-threatening. And what we also heard today, that um, um, when we use it oral, and um, unfortunately for, for the time being, for small children, and spe specifically for those children who are handicapped, the oral um, uh, use is the only one uh, which is possible. Uh, they will go through the first pass metabolism in the liver, and uh, this will cause um, another metabolic uh, um, changes. Um, and it is um, quite different when we use it um, oral or we use it like spray um, or in inhalation. Um, and uh, also we heard that um, the, the C2C19, the one from the enzyme P45 system of the enzymes, is the one who will, um, um, uh, where, where the cannabidiol will um, do the inhibition. And this is maybe also a part of the reason why cannabidiol can be quite efficient because it can um, also raise the other anti-epileptic drugs, um, specifically the benzodiazepines, the clobazam, the frisium. Um, however, it is not the main reason because we know, as it has been um, shown by Goldstein, that um, cannabidiol has different um, ways of um, uh, how it works. Um, you see that uh, the majority of the anti-epileptic drugs uh, will work as a uh, voltage-gated channels blocker, but um, uh, cannabis can um, also work as calcium-gated, uh, potassium-gated, and as carbon-gated inhibitors and so on. And this is um, a recent um, article where it is shown 
that um, the metabolism of THC and cannabidiol can be a bit different. And the most important um, of this um, enzymatic system in uh, THC is 2C9, while um, in cannabidiol is 2C19. And uh, 2C9 is much more uh, strong and has a significant influence on the metabolism of THC, while uh, 2C19 is not so um, strong. And uh, what, what happens with this um, enzyme? Um, the conversion of THC to 11-hydroxy-THC is the one which is the most important because 11-hydroxy-THC is the one um, which is um, um, making the psychotic and um, all the other problems. And um, as we know, um, there is a polymorphism of this um, enzyme and different people will uh, uh, react differently uh, because of uh, this poly polymorphism on the um, on taking of the TLC. And also, uh, this is um, shown in two other papers that there are um, a lot of other antiepileptic drugs which can be um, influenced by um, uh, CBD or CBD enriched products. However, the valproic acid and the clobazam are on the top of the influence. And it was shown um, by this paper. Um, that the clobazam can raise even for 60%, so sometimes reducing clobazam for 30% will not be enough, so we, we should go a little bit, even a little bit lower, specifically when uh, we have patients who will, have, uh, who will be somnolent and who will have uh, problems with uh, walking. And even the uh, metabolite non clobazam uh, can be raised for five times or for 500 times. And uh, this is also a recent paper from December 2018. It has been shown also for the other antiepileptic drugs which are very often <coughs> used um, in uh, um, epilepsy, spe specifically in childhood epilepsy. All these can be influenced and um, the level can raise, but not so much as with clobazam. And as it has been um, uh, noted many times, the, the when we use valproate concomitantly, the um, liver enzymes um, can be raised, so we should regularly uh, make the controls of the liver enzymes. A very known um, uh, person in um, pediatric and epileptology, Emilio Peruca from Italy, um, in his one of his uh, latest papers, he is claiming that um, now we do have um, uh, level one evidence that adjunctive uh, treatment of the um, severe epilepsies um, is um, uh, improving when we um, add um, cannabidiol. However, that maybe um, there is still some effect if uh, the clobazam is um, added, but um, definitely there are specific epileptic syndromes uh, which will um, be um, good um, when we use um, um, cannabidiol or um, cannabis products. And um, in this um, latest paper um, from the beginning of this year, um, uh, so 14 days back, um, it was published, uh, they are claiming actually the same, that definitely there are two um, resistant epileptic syndromes like Dravet syndrome and lenox gastaut syndrome um, which respond um, uh, very well to add on treatment of cannabidiol. And what is also, and they are also um, uh, claiming that um, most probably there is a lot of uh, interaction with un other anti antiepileptic drugs. Um, and they also, um, uh, in this paper, you will find the dosing, administration, and adverse effect um, of cannabidiol, which is um, an important part of this. Um, according to our experiences within four years, we did write uh, a kind of um, guidelines or a kind of recommendations for the medical chamber um, of Slovenia how to use uh, cannabidiol and cannabis products um, in Slovenia for pediatric um, population. However, still we wait for the final approval to be put on the website so that um, everybody, all the pediatricians, can uh, use it. And um, um, uh, also what uh, we heard uh, today many times is um, that um, less is more um, if we use very low dose 
um, and when we increase them um, very slowly, uh, the effect will be probably be better. And don't forget this bell-shaped effect. That means that whenever you are increasing cannabidiol, you can come to a point where there will be no effect even if, if you increase the dose very much. It has been nicely shown in this paper by Ruth Galili um, and the co-authors um, that when you use um, cannabidiol as a pure extract, the shape effect will be much more pronounced than if you use um, um, cannabidiol enriched extract, which uh, usually in Israel the majority of people are using. And this we also heard about the entourage effect. This is also one of the latest papers. Um, um, I think um, uh, Professor Kramer also showed the same results from the same papers that definitely uh, there are uh, signs that when we use um, uh, CBD rich extracts, that means the whole plant extract, um, the effect will be better. And what is the most important is that uh, the average dose is much, much lower than when we use the cannabidiol, um, which means also that this is uh, decreasing the side effects and um, the improvement was better when they used uh, CBD-rich extracts uh, with a very high uh, statistical significance. And of course, um, um, cannabidiol, a THC alone cannot be used, there should be always a, 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 a kind of combination, a ratio um, of um, cannabidiol and THC, because uh, um, the psychotropic and su subjective uh, severe physical uh, effects can be diminished when we um, mix THC with CBD. This was also shown uh, today uh, that until 2013 we have only anecdotal reports of the use of uh, cannabidiol in epilepsy, especially uh, in children, there were no reports. However, after this um, editorial by the three uh, quite famous uh, editors of um, epilepsy, which is the main uh, paper for um, um, epileptic uh, or for epileptologists, um, the use of cannabidiol uh, became much more popular, and especially by this um, um, report of GF, GW Pharma, uh, where they have found very nice uh, results that um, at least 50% of the frequency of the seizures was found in 48%, and 15% were seizure-free. And um, uh, what followed also, that in the um, ha um, larger cohorts um, and little bit older children, um, uh, it was also um, very, very, very successful and very effective. So today um, we have studies for Dravet syndrome and Lenos Gasso, uh, which are double blind, placebo controlled the studies as uh, they should be uh, to, to have a level one evidence. And there are also some other studies which the results will be published soon, uh, specifically. Um, this one is very interesting, using cannabidiol for neonatal hypoxic ischemic encephalopathy because it has been shown on many preclinical studies that the cannabidiol can have very good neuroprotective actions. So uh, this will be the first study, I think it will be published within one month. Um, then uh, that we, when we add to hy uh, therapeutic hypothermia in newborns, uh, the cannabidiol, the um, survival and the quality of life of these newborns will be uh, much better. This is how we started. We started in January 2015. Um, uh, we were, um, uh, first, first we got the um, ethical approval from our um, national um, ethical committee. Um, I think it was in, uh, at the end of 2013. Yes. 13, yes. And uh, then um, we also had this um, ethical principles uh, or ethical position of Epilepsy Foundation and even um, of the um, Helsinki Declaration um, um, Act 37, which is um, uh, saying that whenever you use um, a specific treatments which is not proven in uh, patients who are severely uh, sick um, and need um, 
a kind of alleviation um, it can be um, used. First, we did um, a small study um, um, and we had 15 children taking pure um, one molecular cannabidiol and we were um, comparing them to 12 children for whom uh, we knew that they were taking um, artisanal cannabis, that means homemade uh, cannabis, um, and it has been um, uh, analyzed in the laboratories in, in Canada. You see these were the uh, ratios of artisanal cannabis uh, while the pure uh, CBD was at that time from uh, Bionorica. And the results, the first results, were actually very similar uh, one to another. And that's, uh, this is um, uh, Paul Hornby from Canada. He was kind enough uh, to do the, the, the first analysis of this um, artisanal cannabis and the ratio approximately it was around 14 to 1. Um, and these are the results um, which were very similar to Cannabidiol. This is the ethical approval and this is our protocol. And um, for the comparison of our studies, uh, we used this paper which was published uh, a year um, before um, from uh, Zadok and um, also Yuri Kramer was um, one of the co-authors and these are their results. Um, the, uh, the more than 50% of the seizures um, uh, reduction was seen in 52%, and these are the, uh, some of the side effects. This, this is our um, study. Uh, it was published in March 2018 using the uh, pure cannabidiol. Um, first, it was 70 patients, then they were reduced to 67. This was the starting dose, and this was the um, target dose considered and only two patients um, were having uh, higher doses. Uh, these are the baseline uh, characteristics. You see very similar to the Israeli studies. Uh, many of them um, were having uh, combined anti-epileptic drugs, um, very, very large numbers of anti-epileptic drugs. This was um, the, the age and many of them were having also other kind of treatment. And um, again, as Professor Kramer showed for his study, uh, the majority of them, they had severe um, epilepsies, so-called epileptic encephalopathies of different structural um, encephalitic chromosomal etiology, and um, some of them were genetics. And these are the results. Um, there were um, um, seizure-free and uh, improvement was seen in this percentage and the reduction, more than 50% reduction, was seen in a little bit lower um, uh, number of children than uh, in the Israeli study. You see that this is the Israeli study and this is our results. Um, and these are uh, the side effects. Um, uh, whenever we um, reach the dose of 20 milligram per kg, uh, there was some, um, let us say, quite moderate side effects, uh, the patient was floppy, undynamic, and once we gave the dose of 1,000 mg per day, Professor Kramer said that most probably we should not go uh, beyond 800 mg per day. Uh, one patient uh, looks sedated and there was some um, allergic reaction in some, and in one um, um, ASD and ALT were raised, but um, however, Immediately when we decrease the dose, also the liver enzymes um, were lower. Um, and um, on the other side, we have found some beneficial um, other effects uh, apart from the reducing um, seizures. And these are, this is the combination of different drugs with CBD. Um, the majority of patients, uh, they had um, valproic acid and clobazam, but it was not much um, or significant difference um, regarding the reduction um, of the seizures, um, uh, whatever they were taking. And these are um, uh, just all the um, anti-epileptic drugs listed, um, um, used by our patients. This is just um, to show um, one uh, EEG um, before the use of CBD and um, after uh, six months um, using uh, CBD you see that the bursts, the electrical bursts completely disappeared. This was 
later in June 2018, shown by a Canadian group who were using 50 to 1 uh, CBD THC ratio, and they were counting the spike activity and the reduction of spike activity on the EEG was 70%. Uh, beside that, there was a st uh, statistically significant improvement uh, in quality of life, decrease, um, uh, increase of the seizure-free days, and the decrease of seizure frequency. <coughs> um, at the end, um, just to um, show some of these systematic reviews, I think um, Professor Kramer uh, already showed some of them. Uh, these are the non-randomized studies um, with a similar uh, treatment response. And um, our study is somewhere um, in the middle of this treatment response. Um, and this is um, also um, um, once again uh, how it was um, mentioned. And of course, we should say that um, in all the uh, non-randomized studies, um, there is high potential of bias. Um, we, the, 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 uh, in our study, it was unblinded outcome assessment, lack of comparison group, and so on and so on, which is um, actually uh, the same bias uh, mentioned in all um, studies which were um, non-randomized. Uh, and there is another one, um, this one is a little bit uh, um, larger uh, systematic review of um, 14 uh, different um, articles. Um, and I just wanted to put um, uh, the, 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 the facts that um, already um, in this systematic review there are five studies using CBD and rich uh, cannabis um, and there are three studies who are, which are randomized, double blind and placebo controlled. These are these three studies. Um, there are three studies um, uh, already in children below uh, one year of age and there are four studies including uh, adults one, this one from Tile et al, um, um, up to the age of 55 years. Um, artisanal cannabis, it seems that um, the reduction of the seizures um, is better, um, and um, using the um, artisanal cannabis or uh, cannabidiol enriched products, it seems that uh, the effect will be better, and what is even more important is that the doses used can be much, much um, uh, lower than uh, using the uh, isolated cannabidiol. Uh, this is a recent uh, study also for, from uh, Professor Kramer um, where they used uh, CBD enriched uh, medical cannabis and there was a 50% decrease of seizures and 56%. Uh, the dose was um, around um, more than 11 mg per kg and um, at the start of the treatment uh, below 10 years of age the two, the two things together uh, were giving better um, effect um, and what they have found also that there was no um, significant differences um, when they um, used um, a higher CBD THC ratio compared to lower that means in favor of THC um, also, um, to some extent, we have changed the algorithm today. So uh, today, um, if there is a resistant epilepsy, um, resistant to more than two anti-epileptic drugs, without effect, we use one molecule CBD. And uh, if there is no effect uh, with this combination, then um, we go on add-on of CBD, CBD and THC with high ratio and uh, if there is no effect with the high ratio, then we go on low ratio. Unfortunately, in Slovenia we do not have natural products. The only available is um, CBD um, combined with dronabinol, which is a synthetic THC. And um, the study with the natural cannabis is still uh, waiting for approval from the agency uh, of drugs in Slovenia. Um, uh, in Canada, they already started a very similar uh, study um, uh, that we want to do um, at the same time, um, um, and they are using the same concentration of 10 to 1, um, and this is our study um, waiting for approval. Um, 
today in Slovenia we have two groups who did not respond to cannabidiol. One um, is using the preparation from uh, USA. They are using uh, so-called Charlotte Web preparation and different ratios of uh, Haley's hope. Um, uh, they are um, actually certi certified products from the states. We know exactly what is the concentration inside. However, um, uh, which is to some extent a little bit strange, is that um, there is no proper studies on these two products. Um, I didn't find any study um, showing uh, the results um, of this um, of using these two products. Um, parents are um, uh, anecdotically reporting better cognition, behavior, and less uh, seizures, but um, the proper results we, we do not have. And, and the other uh, group, uh, who are, uh, which is not using the, the proper preparations from uh, uh, Heidi's Hope or Charlotte Webb, is using artisanal cannabis. But we always um, um, ask them to bring a small specimen and um, we always do the uh, analysis um, by kind um, cooperation of uh, Dr. Lucian Gigon, who will have the lecture at the end from the Institute um, Joseph Stefan, so that we know um, uh, exactly what kind of um, treatment we are giving. And also this kind uh, of, of children, this, this part of the children, they are describing less seizures and less aggressive behavior. However, um, we still uh, didn't do uh, the proper um, uh, results for, for, this, uh, for this group of children. Um, the majority of them, they have different ratios of CBD and THC in these artisanal products. However, there will be also cannabidiol, cannabicromia, and cannabigerol um, inside. And just um, to finish, um, that there are um, five children um, using CBDA uh, as an add-on to already existing anti-epileptic drugs plus Hylis Hope or Charlotte Webb, so the two um, declared um, cannabis product, products. And this is the uh, CBDA concentration, you see it is um, uh, high CBDA and um, um, all the other cannabinoids are very um, low. And to finish, uh, this is um, one um, um, recent publication from um, the group um, of Zaflarsky and uh, Devinsky. Um, it is called Expanded Access Program, um, and they have now 607 patients and uh, they were followed up for 96 weeks. And it seems that during this period, that means two years, um, <coughs> the, 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 the side effects are mild and the effect of the drug um, is uh, quite prolonged. So this is, um, the, to some extent, the proof that um, uh, cannabidiol can be quite, um, can have quite a long-lasting effect. These are just some uh, claims from the papers I have shown uh, that uh, today we have compelling evidence that cannabis-based products are um, uh, effective in the treatment of refractory childhood epilepsy, specifically specific epilepsy syndromes, but uh, what the others are claiming also in um, other treatment-resistant um, epileptic seizures. Um, it seems that the results um, which um, have been shown on uh, cannabidiol and uh, cannabis um, uh, or uh, cannabidiol and rich products, um, the favor goes to the um, cannabidiol rich products um, and, um, and the whole plant extracts. Um, but both uh, the, um, the side effects will, have, uh, will be mild and both they will um, have um, increase of clobazam and uh, together with valproate we should be aware that the liver enzyme should be um, checked uh, from time to time. Um, if we consider two years uh, long term, uh, then the long term safety has been shown in the paper um, and um, as it is 
um, uh, already stated in some of the papers uh, today, um, there are uh, some of the products uh, like cannabidigarin and TCBDV and uh, CBDV, uh, which can uh, maybe also be uh, effective in future. Thank you very much. I think you have, Professor, some experience about this uh, developing the to tolerance and to make push out period. Uh, so maybe how to uh, stop the drug and introduce. Yeah, as uh, Professor Kramer already said, no, um, we um, uh, we actually when, when we reach um, between 10 to 15 milligram per kg per day, we do not increase uh, the dose, but we um, very much decrease the dose. Sometimes um, uh, the children will be left without the treatment for maybe two, three, four days, and then we increase it again but uh, with the half um, dose then uh, we used to use it before. So if before we started with one milligram per kg per day, then when we restart, we restart with 0 0.5 milligram per kg. And sometimes it helps, sometimes it doesn't. Thank you, David, and you group for bringing this issue to, to this place. I, I'm disappointed to see a very small number of civilian pediatric and pediatrologists in the fall. Me too, and even pediatricians are not yeah. much. Thank you. Now, I would have two questions. Remembering the, 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 the workshop that we had with Emilio Peruca twice when we invited him, we invited him here to read very carefully uh, <laughs> the, the papers, I would have two questions. How do you how do you deal with parents who come and ask you to introduce um, uh, these products to their children, uh, but they do not uh, enter the group that you have been studying. Uh, how, how do you deal with them? Uh, if they insist, do you take notice and you analyze the data anyhow? And the second question, the algorithm that you're showing uh, um, classically would include diagnose, diagnosing uh, refractory epilepsy as a possible candidate for surgery, which is not there on your slide. I hope that it's still being done. It's still being done. The thing that I would be cautious from an another situation, not this one, because I don't have any personal experience in the field now, was that when I'm enthusiastic about a new approach, uh, other classical approaches tend to be neglected. And uh, so how, how do you deal with that? Okay. Yeah. Um, uh, first, the response to the last question, actually, those um, uh, patients who were in the study were all uh, not the candidates, the candidates for the surgery epilepsy because as you have seen the majority of them they had severe epileptic encephalopathies either it is a, a chromosomal one or maybe this is post-encephalitic so it is diffuse they were not um, candidates for, for the surgery so this is uh, the answer to the last question some were also uh, evaluated uh for yes, some of them they were evaluated and some of them, uh, they, maybe one or two, they were even operated and re-operated but um, uh, without any, any uh, good response. Um, the um, response to the first question is um, that when we did the study, um, somewhere in the middle, maybe so it was 2016, um, the mid of 2016, we have had to report to the uh, National Ethical Committee um, what, what were the um, interim results. And when we reported about the results, uh, the, the um, Ethical Committee sent it to the um, insurance company and the insurance company they decided um, to finance um, the, the, the product. So um, at first we started so that the product was um, bought for the um, reasons of the study by the University Medical Center, but thereafter um, it was uh, financed by the insurance. So nowadays um, if the patient um, who is um, who, who, can, who can be given a cannabidiol can be prescribed on the recipe. Patients have come to me, they 
for cannabis, actually I, I respect them as coming for evaluation. And if in the end of the evaluation I think that they may be, uh, might be good candidates for surgery, I tell them, listen, my recommendation is epilepsy surgery. But some of the families uh, are answering that, oh yeah, we understand, we're afraid of the surgery, this is a lot uh, uh, dangerous, uh, cannabis is not a dangerous approach, let us try cannabis first. And then I go with them. CBD and other cannabinoids are lipophilic. We were talking about uh, pretty high doses here. Um, do you measure um, the accumulation of CBD in the body, or is that perhaps anything you have to do? Is that anything to do with the bell-shaped curve? Is that why you have to perhaps decrease the dose? No, um, unfortunately, in Slovenia, nobody can measure the CBD. That is the um, forensic institute. We have contacted them uh, if they would like to, to, if they will do the studies for us to measure CBD in blood, but they refused because they said it is a quite complicated uh, method. So um, now, when we are planning the second study um, using the natural product, um, we are looking forward to do also the pharmacokinetic studies and maybe. Um, getting the results of these pharmacokinetic studies will um, uh, we, we will be able to do further um, concentrations in the blood. Uh, the question is about artisanal cannabis from local farmers. First, uh, it's about the terminology where this artisanal comes from. Mm -hmm. you know, I, yes. It's the first time I hear. Second is uh, what, does, what are the forms uh, of these uh, products? Uh, uh, what are the forms? Are they uh, herbs, raisins, oils? Uh, what kind of forms are these products? First of all, um, artisanal, I, I, I like it very much. It is coming from the, from the States, not the American. Uh, the Americans are using this word. Actually, this is the the local uh, cannabis product or um, farm uh, farm product, no cannabis um, from the farmers. Um, uh, the, the other thing is that um, uh, maybe uh, Dr. Gigon can tell you a little bit um, more about this because he is doing the um, uh, analysis for us um, regarding the the major cannabinoids um, in this uh, specimen. Um, unfortunately, yes, um, we have found maybe in three or four specimens very, very high concentrations of THC and very low concentrations of CBD, which should not be. No. So we, we, in, in, this, in, in, in this way, we, we do not recommend them to use uh, such products.